Welcome to the class. In this video, we will learn to use differentiation to find whether the function is increasing or decreasing. So let's get started. Consider the function y is equal to x minus 4 whole square. This is the table for this graph. When x is 0, y is 16. When x is 1, y is 9. When x is 2, y is 4. When x is 3, y is 1. And when x, and when x is 4, y is 0. It means that in the interval 0 to 4, function is decreasing. As x increases from 0 to 4, y decreases from 16 to 0. Now in the interval 4 to 8, close interval 4 to 8, when x is 4, y is 0, when x is 5, y is 1, when x is 6, y is 4, when x is 7, y is 9, when x is 8, y is 16. Here as x increases, y also increases from 0 to 16. x moves from 4 to 8 and y increases from 0 to 16. So in second interval, that is 4, 8, the function is increasing. Let us see this graphically. This is the graph of the function. When x is 0, y is 16. When x is 1, y is 9. When x is 2, y is 4. When x is 3, y is 1. When x is 4, y is equal to 0. So, in first part, from 0 to 4, the function is decreasing. But in the second part, from 4 to 8, when x is 4, y is equal to 0. When x is, a when x is equal to 5, y is equal to 1. When x is equal to 6, y is equal to 4. When x is equal to 7, y is equal to 9. And when x is equal to 8, y is equal to 16. Now in this graph, we observe that when we move from left to right up to 4, the height of the graph decreases from 16 to 0. And from 4 onwards, when x is greater than 4, the height of the graph increases from 4 to 16. On the left of 4, the function is decreasing. And on the right of 4, the function is increasing. The definition is let i be an open interval contained in a domain of a real valued function f, then f is said to be first increasing on i if x1 less than x2 in i implies fx1 is equal to or less than fx2 for every x1 comma x2 belong to, belonging to i. So when x is increasing, Sometimes it may remain stationary. In that case, function is called increasing. It will be called strictly increasing if x1 less than x2 in i implies fx1 is less than fx2 for every x1 comma x2 belonging to the interval. In this case, fx1 cannot be equal to fx2. Third, decreasing on i if x1 less than x2 in the interval x1 less than x2 in that interval implies fx1 is greater than or equal to fx2 for every x1 comma x2 belonging to that interval it is called decreasing. At some point the value of fx1 can be equal to fx2 it is called decreasing strictly decreasing when x1 is less than x2 implies fx1 is less than fx2 for every x1 comma x2 belonging to that interval the function is called stri strictly decreasing uh, here you can see there is no equal to sign when the function is strictly increasing or strictly 
decreasing here also strictly decreasing here also in strictly increasing case there is no equal to sign here so let us see how the graph will look like so this is the graph of strictly increasing function this is the graph of increasing function at some point it may be at some time fx1 may be equal to fx2 at these point the value of the function is not increasing it remain stationary but it is not going down from this point to this point it is increasing then for some time it is it remains constant and then again increasing so this is called increasing function in first case this is strictly increasing because because there is no point in this interval where the function ceases to be increasing at every point it is increasing then uh, see this is strictly decreasing function from this point to this point the function is continuously decreasing see this case this is decreasing function from this point to this point it is decreasing from this point to this point it is again decreasing but between these two points it ceases to be decreasing but it is not increasing it remains constant so this function is called decreasing function this is increasing function this is strictly increasing function and this one is strictly decreasing function now we will learn theorem number one without its proof let f be continuous on closed interval a b and differentiable in open interval a b then f is increasing in closed interval a b if f prime x is greater than zero for every x belonging to a b f prime x means the derivative of f b f is decreasing in closed interval a b if first derivative is less than zero less than zero means negative for each x belong to open interval a b f is constant in closed interval a b if first derivative is zero obviously when a function is constant its derivative will be zero let us again once again repeat it f will be increasing if its first derivative is greater than zero means first derivative is positive f will be decreasing if its first derivative is less than zero means negative f will be obviously constant if its first derivative is zero let us see graphically what does it mean see this graph in this graph a b is the tangent at a and c d is the tangent at b this is the slope of the tangent at a and this is the slope of the tangent at b obviously this angle is acute angle and this angle is obtuse angle this angle is obtuse angle and this angle is acute angle we know that acute angle line first quadrant and first quadrant all trigonometric ratios are positive obtuse angle line in the second quadrant and sec in second quadrant tangent is negative tangent mean slope of the tangent tan theta so when slope is negative the function is decreasing when slope is positive the function is increasing and obviously when slope is zero it means that function is constant now we will solve some question from the textbook exercise 6.2 question number one is so that the function given by fx 3x plus 17 is strictly increasing on r let us assume x1 is greater than x2 this implies 3 times x1 is greater than 3 times x2 multiplying both sides by 3 adding 17 on both sides 3x1 plus 17 is greater than 3x2 plus 17 this size is nothing but the value of fx1 and this side is nothing but the value of fx2 it implies fx1 is greater than fx2 so x1 greater than x2 implies 
एफ एक्स वन ग्रेटर देन एफ एक्स टू इट मे बी लेस देन ऑल्सो एक्स वन लेस देन एक्स टू इम्प्लाइज एफ एक्स वन इज लेस देन एफ एक्स टू दिस इम्प्लाइज एफ इज स्ट्रिक्टली इंक्रीजिंग इफ एक्स इज इंक्रीजिंग एफ एक्स इज ऑल्सो इंक्रीजिंग If x is decreasing, f x is also decreasing. It means that it is strictly increasing. Question number two: So that the function f x is equal to e raised power two x is strictly increasing on r. Now, if you remember the graph of e raised power x is like this. Its value is always positive. Obviously, the exponential function is always positive, but we'll show it here. Here we'll use first derivative test. That is theorem number one. Find the derivative dy by dx or f prime x is equal to applying chain rule e raised power two x and the derivative of two x is two. So first derivative is two times e raised power two x. Now e raised power two x is always positive. As this is x axis and this is y axis. As the value of the function always lie above the x-axis, it means that it is positive. This is zero. This is say one. This is two, like that. So the value of e raised power two x is always positive. So we are multiplying two with a positive number. So product is always positive. It means that first derivative is greater than zero. It means that f is Strictly increasing in R. Question number three: Show that the function f x equal to sine x strictly increasing in open interval zero to pi by two and is strictly decreasing in the open interval pi by two to pi. Let us find its first derivative. It will be cos x. Now in the interval. Open interval zero to pi by two. This value is positive. It means that first derivative is positive. Positive means f x is greater than f prime x is greater than zero. It means that f x is increasing in open interval zero to pi by two. A in open interval pi by two to pi cos x is negative. This is the point pi by two, and this is the point pi. It means that the value of cos x or value of x lies in the second quadrant, and we know that in second quadrant cos is always negative. So in second quadrant, this is. Negative, negative means first derivative is less than zero. This means f is strictly decreasing in open interval pi by two to pi. Now we'll solve question number five. Find the interval in which the function f given by f x is equal to two x cubed minus three x squared. Minus thirty six x plus seven a strictly increasing b strictly decreasing. For such question, we'll find. For such question, we'll first find the der first derivative. So differentiating this with respect to x, we'll get six x square minus six x minus thirty six. Then. We'll equate first derivative to zero. We'll get six x square minus six x minus thirty six equal to zero. Taking six common, we'll get x square minus x minus six is equal to zero. Uh, we'll get x square minus three x plus two x minus six is equal to zero. Factorizing. X minus three, x minus three, 
right taking x minus 3 common we'll get x plus 2 is equal to 0 it means that first derivative when this is at x equal to 3 or at x equal to minus 2 at these two point first derivative vanishes so let us draw a straight line and mark the point x is equal to minus 2 and x equal to 3 on it now the function first derivative 6x square minus 6x minus 36 will be 0 at this point now let us find the value of first derivative in this interval. This interval is open interval minus infinity to 2. Then second interval is minus 2 to 3. Third interval is 3 to open interval infinity. So let us find the value of first derivative. What is it? So let us find the value of first derivative in this interval. So 0 lies in this interval. It will be somewhere here. So let us find what is the value of first derivative at 0. The value of first derivative at 0, putting 0 in place of x, will get minus 36. This will become 0, this will become 0 and we will get minus 36. So it means that between these interval, first derivative is negative. Now in this interval, let us put x equal to 4. So this value will be this value when x equal to 4, the first derivative will be 4, 4 to 16, uh, 6 to 96, 24 minus 36. So 96 minus 60 positive. So in this interval, the first derivative will be positive. Now let us find the, the value of first derivative in this interval. Let us put x equal to minus 3, which will fall in this interval. Let us put x equal to minus 3, which will fall in this interval. So it will be 6 into 9 minus 6 into minus 3 minus 36 54 plus 18 plus minus 36 obviously this is positive this is positive it means that in the interval minus infinity to 2 this is positive means greater than 0 in interval minus 2 to 3 this is negative means less than 0 and in last interval in the interval 3 to infinity this is positive means greater than 0 it means that the function will be increasing in this and this in interval and in this interval it will be decreasing. But we have to find in which interval it is strictly increasing and, it, and in which interval it is strictly decreasing. So close interval will not be there. It means that f is strictly increasing in minus infinity to minus 2 union 3 to infinity f is strictly decreasing in minus 2 to 3 so this is the answer now let us solve one more question question number 7 show that y is equal to log 1 plus x minus 2x upon 2 plus x x is greater than minus 1 is an increasing function of x throughout its domain differentiating with respect to x dy over dx is equal to 1 over 1 plus 
x minus using quotient rule now simplifying the numerator we'll get 4 plus 2x minus 2x 4 plus 2x minus 2x divided by 2 plus x whole square now this will cancel this taking LCM 1 plus x into 2 plus x whole square we'll get 2 plus x whole square minus 4 into 1 plus x expanding 2 plus x whole square we'll get 4 plus 4x plus x square minus 4 minus 4x divided by 1 plus x into 2 plus x whole square now this 4 will cancel this 4 this 4x will cancel this 4x in the numerator we'll get x square and the denominator will be 1 plus x into 2 plus x whole square this is the value of dy over dx we have given x is greater than or equal to we have given x is greater than minus 1 now this term and this term will always be positive because both are completely square now we'll find the value of this when x is greater than minus 1 when x is equal to minus 1 this will be 0 obviously but when x is greater than minus 1 this term will also be positive so it means that when x is greater than minus 1 dy over dx positive means dy over dx is greater than 0 when x is greater than minus 1 it means that f is strictly increasing in its domain similarly we can solve the remaining problem of this exercise in the next exercise we'll learn use of derivatives in finding tangents and normal to occur until then keep learning thank you